How many we have dead? So right now I've got six dead, four wounded that I know of. Welcome to Camp Gruber, which on this day has been turned into an Iraqi village complete with innocent civilians and murderous insurgents. Rear security! Behind us! Rear security is over there! Dozens of guardsmen learning under fire how to distinguish friend from foe. We're just gonna walk through, is that all right with you guys? Uh, it's all right. Learning how to stay alive. First room entering this building. Right. That's where the CCP is gonna be established. Well, let's everybody get a taste of uh, what it's gonna be like. Um, a more realistic training environment with the noise, with the explosions, uh, with uh, firing blank ammunition. It allows us to communicate with each other and, uh, and really get a feel for how it's gonna be. They discover it's going to be like this. Quiet one moment, and then. Some of these men and women are first timers, but others, like Sergeant Robert Bridgewater, have served in Iraq, already survived the real thing. This level of training, he says, simply put, saves lives. Think on our feet better, react to situations as they develop. Uh, be aware of the situation and uh, helps us to build a, a good team, which is very important because your buddies are all that's going to keep you alive. Here at the Battle Creek Golf Club in Broken Arrow, you'll find a lot of these in the parking lot, out-of-state license plates. They belong to people who came into town to watch the PGA, but also want to play golf too. It's a week that's all about golf for Carl Bracey. If all goes as planned, I should play uh, probably four times. Now, if I get a couple straight like that on the course today. And he won't be playing alone. Here's one foot of road. And I have some friends coming in uh, from out of town and want to play. All right, Edmo, hit it on the green. They're showing up at Battle Creek. Oh, he just barely misses. And other golf courses all over the area golf fans in from out of town who are also golfers themselves. And we're going to the PGA tomorrow morning. And likewise, if all goes as planned, I'll play some golf tomorrow afternoon. All the extra golfers. I've got 424 or 441. Means plenty of extra cash for courses. How many players? Pretty much book solid all the way till 3.30. And the out of town golfers aren't the only ones teeing off. The PGA Championship is also inspiring local golfers to play more. And that's a pretty good shot. It motivates them to want to get out and more play and practice a little bit more. It kind of excites them when you get a major championship that comes in town. But Carl and his out-of-town friends don't need inspiration. All they need is a tee time. And the big business here at Battle Creek and other courses around Tulsa is expected to last for weeks. No one expects this renewed interest in golf to fade anytime soon. Reporting in Broken Arrow, Justin Wilfon, Fox 23 News. Floodwaters have risen several more inches since we were out here last night. Yesterday, you could see a road closure sign that was still visible. Today, it's completely underwater. Now, neighbors we're talking to today say these waters are still on the rise. It's frustrating, I guess it'd be. Put a lot of work into it. Travis Gatzmeyer, his son and brother-in-law, went by boat today through his front yard to see how his property is withstanding the flood. It's been three years getting all the trees weeded out and grass to grow, plant grass, plant shrubs, thousands of dollars in landscaping. He thinks it's just a matter of time before water moves into his home. I don't know if the house will take another one. The bag's probably moving about 50 foot up the road there. And just downstream, or what used to be down the road, a grass meadow that produced hay for livestock is now a lake. Travis says it will take five or six years for it to grow back. Pull your motor up, Dusty. When a person starts losing his most valuable asset, which is his home, he needs to know that somebody out there cares. Rogers County Commissioner Mike Helm says it's the worst he's ever seen. We've got two crises going on. The oil coming down from Coffeyville, the water coming from Coffeyville and Bartlesville. Now emergency crews are battling the oil with buoys before it gets into Lake Ulaga. Hopefully those buoys and the cleanup and the suction tank they can use to suck that off or skim that off of the surface. 
The possibility of oil, the water, the destruction. For some like Travis, it's almost too much to bear. Disappointing. Reporting in West Claremore, Kathy Koretich, Fox 23 News. It's been a while, but the sights and sounds of mowing and edging have not been a part of driving down Tulsa's major streets. But before seeing workers in action here near 11th and Memorial, drivers like Ivan Knight have plenty to say about the tall grass. Well, the grass is terrible. It's a disgrace for our city to be like that. Just out and out a disgrace. He says it's more than just a nuisance. Can't see around it and it causes allergies. Yeah, it's, it's pitiful. This tall grass can cause a lot of problems for drivers, even accidents. Now, take a look here at this turning lane. I can barely see the oncoming traffic. And as you can see, they can barely see me. If I make one wrong move, it could cause a serious accident. So the advice to the public would be is if you can't see, don't go. Public Works contractor Paul Strezik says the constant rain has made mowing this year tough task, but they are trying to fix the problem. We do all the mowing by private contract, and the private contractors are mowing overtime and on weekends. And that's just part of the problem. Money is also an issue. We've only been given money to mow the medians eight times a year. We need to be mowing about uh, once every two weeks, and we're basically mowing about once a month. Whether it's once a month or once a week, Knight says he just wants his city to look good. Oh, I said, oh, finally, finally. I said, we're getting some action, finally. And things, I said, that, that looks good. 